Hello and welcome. My name's Elise and I'm the owner and the artist behind the Pink Brush and Co. Today we're going to be having some fun with Pure Eco's brand new neons. There are five colours in the range. They are available in chalk finish in 200ml jars. So there's two pinks, a purple, a yellow and a blue as shown. Really vibrant, really beautiful colours. We're going to be applying them to this beautiful jewelry box. This is just straight out of the packet. It's raw pine. All I've done is give it a very quick wipe down, just to make sure there's no dust or dirt on it. We're gonna jump straight in. I have sped this up just because it's a bit of a process, but it's well worth the effort. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be blending and layering them, as you can see. So I'm first working with the two pinks and the purple. This, I'm just sort of placing them. I'm making sure that the colors flow around the corners as well. But as you can see, I'm just popping them randomly all over the box. Remembering this is the first coat and I will be adding an additional coat. Um, the coverage is exceptional with chalk finish, so I'm not too worried there. But if you're working on a darker piece, then obviously keep in mind coverage as well. As you can see, I've sort of done one colour, then the next, then the next, filling in those gaps. I find this way as well, I get that nice flow around the corner. That's just making sure that as the box sits and as you're looking at it, it's flowing. Otherwise, it will be very jarring and it just won't come together as a single piece. Instead, it will look like individual sides, which is what we're trying to avoid. You can really see here as I lay the box down how the purple and the same pink comes up and around the top of the box. That's the flow that I'm talking about. So I want it to look like a really connected piece. And that's really important when you're doing this sort of style of finishing around a piece. It's not a flat canvas, so you need to work with the edges and the shape. Of course, any sort of layering, blending, etc you're going to get a few more brush strokes than normal because you're working the paint um, while it's starting to dry. So a quick sand uh, with a super fine sandpaper. I'm using Pure Eco sanding pads. Um, use whatever you've got on hand. is a great idea between coats. So now I really want to bring in a green as well. You can mix all of Pure Eco's paint. So here I'm mixing the neon blue and the neon yellow to create this really, really beautiful green. Now, while I'm doing this as well, I have a brush for each color so that I'm not contaminating the jars with the wrong color. Um, you can use one brush if you like. This is just me wanting to make sure that I'm not mixing colors on purpose. So I've mixed this really beautiful green. I only want a tiny bit of it, so that's more than enough for me. I'm also making sure that I've got my original colors ready to go. And I'm laying them down first as I go and then layering my yellow, my green and my blue on top of those. That's just going to help with the blend and working on a slightly wet paint is going to help with that blend as well. So now I'm going to add my yellow. Now, my yellow, my green and my blue. I just want tiny hints of these. So I'm just putting down a little bit here and there. You can see I'm bringing in my pink just to blend out that yellow a little bit and then my yellow on top as well. Working with wet paint is going to help that blend a little bit more. So I'm just going to continue doing that. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue and a little bit of the green on each side. So, And again, I'm making sure that it's coming around the edges to make sure it's a nice cohesive piece. Okay, so as once I've got all my paint on there, what I want to do, and I'm going to do this a little bit different than your normal blending, I'm actually going to remove some of that colour. 
So first of all, I'm going to grab a hairdryer just because I'm impatient. I'm going to blast it with that for just a moment. And then once it's dry, I'm going to come in with a damp cloth. Now chalk paint it can be reactivated with water or damp cloth. And all I'm going to do is rub that area really, really well. And I'll end up with this sort of boat wood chippy um, look where the texture of the timber and the paint underneath is going to come through. The yellow, the blue and the green are going to be broken down a little bit. And it's just going to give me this really nice little hint of the yellow and the blue without being too much. I want the pinks and the purples to be my main colour. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing one side at a time, blasting it with the hairdryer for a second just to dry it and then coming in with my cloth. See on these final photos that the blue, the green and the yellow, it's still there, but it's really rubbed back and it's given that really beautiful finish that I was after. Go to part two to see stenciling and sealing. Thanks for watching.